All right, hello everyone, and um, peace of Christ to all. Uh, today, as we informed you, we have uh, an interview with uh, uh, a person maybe most of you do not know, but maybe you can join him later in uh, in his casting. And uh, his name is Ben, and he is live with me right now. And uh, please introduce yourself. I certainly am, Christian. My name's Ben. I've run a podcast called Who Knew I Was Right, and it's very odd to be on this opposite end. You're introducing me. It's normally me introducing the guests, so, yeah, good fun. Yeah, that's a good one, because, you know, people who they are listening to me, they don't know you, and maybe people who they are listening to you, they don't know me. So, and uh, from my side, I'm a Christian prince. Just type my name in the internet, and you will get scared. <laughs> 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 indeed, indeed, indeed. But to be honest with you, I spent the last couple of days watching the videos. I didn't get scared. I got informed. Um, I was very impressed with your content, and I've learned a lot. And I've written down a few questions today as well from your videos that I'd like to just talk about and expand on a little bit further, if that's all right. Sure. Excellent, excellent. Well, just for the benefit of my audience and my show, I'm going to now introduce yourself, Christian. Now, I'm sure your audience are going to know this as well, but just bear with me for all of one minute to make this all make sense my side. So let's have a second start of the day while he gets his microphone cable out of his chair. See, that's why I edit, you see, to get rid of that kind of stuff. But anyways, today I am joined by Christian Prince. Now, in order to give this man a proper introduction, I've gone to his Wikipedia page. And may I say, Christian, as well, you are my first guest that's had its own Wikipedia page. So, yeah, I'm honored. I'm honored. But it says, Christian Prince is an author and Christian apologist. Christian Prince was born and raised in a Christian family in the Middle East. He is a native Arabic speaker. After his teachers criticized his religion, he's, he determined to study Islam and earned a degree in Islamic law, which is Sharia law, as we all know, and civil law. He is the author of The Deception of Allah and has posted hundreds of videos on YouTube showing him debating various Muslim scholars on Paul Talk. Is that right, Paul Talk? Paul Talk, Paul, yes, Paul Talk. Yeah. Paul Talk, including Shia scholar, Hushman al-Husseini, and he also uses a pseudonym, Christian Prince, for his protection. Now, I'll tell you what, let's start off on that one. Protection. Do you feel you need some protection? Have you been subjected to any uh, see, criticizing Islam? Uh, no, the, the one who made the, the made the Wikipedia is not me. So this is what people believe. But for me, it's uh, for more more privacy. Not really. I don't I don't fear no one. Uh, but it gives me more freedom. Like, as an example, in the, in the coming... Uh, after New Year, I'm going to go to some countries around the world, and still I can go in Islamic countries, and they will not know that this is a Christian press. So it gives me a great advantage of going anywhere, and no one have an idea who is this guy. So it's not really, uh, uh, you know, as a protection as much it is, uh, uh, it's it's better. But the person, like the, the person who made the Wikipedia page, I don't know, uh, they said like one, hundreds of videos. I have thousands of videos. <laughs> <laughs> Not having it. I was like, come on now, give me justice. I have thousands. Get on there and change it yourself. I make it look that little bit cooler. Yeah, it's okay. Whoever make it, you know, maybe he can fix it. Yeah. Indeed. Now, look. First question I've got for you today is: When did Islam first start playing a role in your life? You see, in the Middle East, when you grow up in uh, in the society. Right away, since the childhood, you start learning that there is something that's called a Christian and there is something that's called Muslims, and there is uh, there is a problems, you know, there. And uh, you go to school, uh, you know, the majority are Muslims, and you find yourself like a, a unique person somehow, and um, everything is against you. TV stations speak against you, radio stations speak against you, textbooks, everything is against you. And then, in the same time, if you try to find the answer, because the Christians in the Middle East, the same as any uh, Christian minority in Islamic countries, they they live in fear. So this is a topic nobody want to talk about. So even if you try to find, uh, let us say, uh, answers how we can refute those Muslims, uh, rarely you find the brave ones who they are willing to talk about it because it's very risky. So it was a challenge, and uh, challenge make you even better fighter, you know, for the truth. So it was not really a bad experience for me, as much it was uh, an encouragement. And I believe if it's not what it is, I will not be who I am today. 
you know. But you mind me asking whereabouts in the Middle East you were? Uh, I don't born. share this information uh, uh, for better purpose. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Now you always heard that there was a difference. You know, you always hear you know within Islamic countries talking about the Christian being different to the Muslims. But how did the actual like general population treat you? Did you feel that you were like ostracized, or were they treating you normally? Uh, no, not really, because you know simply like uh, even in the Middle East, if you are from a Christian family, but let us say. Uh, depend how powerful your family is and who you are then they can treat you differently in the Middle East they discriminate everybody even Muslims are discriminated so uh, I did not suffer from real problems because we are not the kind of family who take things down which means if somebody insult my family they will face the consequence it doesn't matter if they are Muslims or not so I was like I wasn't brought from uh, uh, the kind of uh, groups who uh, uh, accept insult or accept discrimination. So I did not really face any problems. But the only problem we have that we don't have somebody to share answers with us and how we can refute Muslims. And when you refute Muslims, you have to be careful too. Uh, you, you know, you cannot say Muhammad is a false prophet. You cannot say you have to be extremely careful when you refute them. You know, otherwise you are igniting. You are looking for a fight, a big fight. And because you are the minority, uh, obviously you are not capable of uh, winning this fight. For sure. But I've noticed the way you take on Islam is academically. Now you actually went to university to study. What was the course called? Was it a bachelor's degree, a three-year well, course? No, yeah, I have a, a, a degree in Islamic law. I'm qualified to be a lawyer or a judge in Islamic uh, court or uh, any court in the, in the Middle East. Uh, and uh, you know, in, in the Middle East, when did you, you you learn law? You have to study religion. It's a must because everything is connected to religion. So you have to study Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. But you study only the side where it is about the law. Now, when it's come to Islam, Islam is involved in everything. I mean, even if you even open a window in your house, Islam is involved with that. You know, you have to go by the Sharia law. If you build a, ha a house, uh, how high the fence will be should be. Um, everything is involved, like even the architect of, uh, of buildings, uh, streets. Uh, so Islam is trying to put itself in everywhere in life. And this is why you have to study the, the Islamic law. And that you know, goes too for inheritance and divorce and marriage and crimes. So uh, all the law is based on uh, what it's called Sharia law. But in the same time, I after studying forever, uh, this uh, uh, cult, I found that there is nothing is called Sharia Allah. It is about what Muhammad he created, but it was not really Allah. It was a bunch of uh, uh, moody stuff. This guy sometimes something he says something in the morning, he says something the opposite afternoon. So it was not really uh, Allah as much. It is whatever Muhammad he says we follow. You know, because uh, you know when you say Allah, you are talking about as uh, like an intelligent. Uh, a constitution or design uh, but if you look at the Sharia uh, 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 practice it's a very savagery and there is no logic of it and it's full of contradictions yeah I found especially in my last episode talking to my previous guest that Muhammad used to use the Word of God to manipulate situations to his advantage have you, have you come across this as well is what I'm saying there does that make sense well, everything in Islam is about Muhammad advantage. There's nothing about the advantage of his God. You know, uh, uh, the Quran always speak about that you have to obey Muhammad and uh, Allah. And if you don't obey Muhammad, you are not obeying Allah. But all of us, we knew that Muslims, they never saw uh, Allah. They never heard Allah. They heard only Muhammad. As an example, in chapter 3, verse uh, 32, it says, قُلْ أَطِيُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولُ فَإِن تَوَلُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْكَافِرِينَ in, uh, which mean uh, obey the prophet obey Allah and the, and the messenger and those who disobey they are kuffar and Allah he don't like them so uh, it's simple and clear that you have to obey Muhammad same you can find in chapter 3 verse 132 uh, same can be found in chapter 4 verse uh, uh, 59 uh, uh, it's all over you know like it's all over the Quran that obedience to Muhammad is a must not the obedience to Allah. As an example, if you if you uh, read something in the Quran, the Muslim they say to you as an example, 
that uh, muta was a practice of Islam uh, in this uncertain time and this is can be found in chapter 4 verse 24 now you ask them today the Muslim Sunni specifically they say to you the Prophet he abrogated this verse but shouldn't you obey Allah Allah he says you do muta Allah never said ever don't do muta so which one you follow they follow Muhammad so obviously obedience to Muhammad is a lot more important than obedience to Allah Wow well, that's a, why, why do you think that is? Because he is the God. I mean, he is this guy. He is just a, replacing God by himself. Even his name, his name is Muhammad. Do you know what Muhammad mean? No. Uh, the praised one. You know, obviously he is claiming to be God because when you say the praised one, it's like, so who is the praised to? Allah? <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, uh, Muhammad, he changed his name. His real name is Qatham. He switched it to the praised one. And by doing that, simply he is in pla placing himself as the holy God. But yet he claimed that he is the holy servant of God. But the fact, everything about him. You see, the, the Muslims, as an example, they say the Christians, by worshipping Jesus, they are they commit shirk, which means sharing, worshipping God with other person. But the Muslims, actually, they are, they are the one who do that. for Because for us as a Christian, we believe in the Trinity. And the Trinity is for us is, is not the three gods. But the Muslims, they always associate the name of Muhammad with the name of their God. If a Muslim says that I witness that Allah is God, is he is he enough to be considered to be a Muslim? No. The Shahada have to be containing two names, the name of Allah and the name of Muhammad. Now, if Muhammad message is about believing in Allah, so why he inserted his name next to the name of Allah? And how is it qualified to be next to the name of his God? And how he can say that if you want to be saved, you have to witness that there is no God but Allah and there is no Prophet but Muhammad. What about the 124,000 Prophet of Islam? What about we add their names to the Shahada? Because Islamic claim that Allah, he sent 124,000 Prophet and Muhammad is the last one according to the Muslims. So if the Shahada is a truthful, not about Muhammad being equal to God, then the Muslim, if they want to insult and that they want to insert a name of a prophet, they should add all the names of the 124,000 prophet. What about uh, uh, the Muslim? They show us that Musa in his times uh, uh, told his because Muslim, Muslim, they say Musa was a Muslim. Did Musa told the Jew that you have to say there's no God but Allah and Musa is a prophet? No. Did, the, did, did Jesus did that? No. no. So why only Muhammad? Obviously, Muhammad is just a person trying he he plays himself as a servant of god but he is above his god and his god is just a tool for his money for his sex for his favor you know muhammad make chapters just about his private part about his uh, sexual needs uh, even aisha she said to muhammad in in the in the sahih hadith uh, uh, i see your god he rush into your 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 desire muhammad so even Aisha, she noticed that Muhammad is a, is, a, is, a, is a scam. You know, what kind of God he make a chapter saying that uh, any woman she want to give herself to the Prophet. I mean, why the Prophet need women to give themselves to him? You know, what, what, uh, what exactly that will do to, to God and to Islam? If this guy is interested in spreading Islam, is that how you do it? That any woman she can take off her skirt and she jump with you in the bed? That does not make sense. So obviously, all all uh, the agenda of Muhammad is about him and him and him, and then Allah is just, you know, a name I use to give myself the authority. I've never thought about that before. I really haven't. The fact that Muhammad puts himself in parity with his gods—that that's crazy to think that he could even do that, and it just shows the ego of the man. Actually, he is uh, more important than God. Uh, you know, the Quran says. That in Allah wa malaiktahu, yusalluna ala nabi. Allah and His angel, angels, they are praying on the Prophet. Okay, how He is praying in the Prophet? I mean, how how that can be? Uh, uh, you know, if uh, God, you know, you see, uh, God and the angels, all doing one thing. They are praying on Muhammad and they are saluting him. And this is can be found in chapter thirty-three, verse number fifty-six. The Muslim, they will say to you that this is the word you saloon mean a blessing. This is a false translation. But let us uh, let us go with the Muslim false uh, uh, explanation. 
even if Allah and the angels they are sending a blessing in Muhammad that will make Muhammad the center of the whole universe because the verse is so clear in Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabiyya ayyuha alladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima who is left let us see Allah and the angels are praying on Muhammad and the believers they pray on Muhammad and they salute him so the whole universe have one person in the middle and Allah and the angels and the believers in around him all of them they are doing one thing praying on Muhammad how that can make Muhammad a servant of God I have no idea obviously he is God because even Allah himself and the angels are his in his service you know when Muhammad he have a fight with his wives Muhammad he made a verse about that you know saying uh, 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 you know if you don't uh, if you don't repent uh, from being against the Prophet uh, you know Allah and the angels and the believers are going to be his backup and this is can be found in chapter 66 verse number four in tatuba ilallah he faqad saqad khulubakuma wa in tadahara alayhi fa inna allaha huwa mawlaah wa jibreelu wa salihu al-mu'mina wal malaika ba'd dhalika dhahir so if you repent speaking to the wives of muhammad what kind of god he need to make a chapter about about a guy having a fight with two of his wives i mean do do need god to be involved in this you know you see the muslim they say to us they lie they say there is a bernard Shaw. He said in one of his books, which is this book, it never been exist, it's just a lie. That Muhammad he can solve the problem of the words when he is drinking his coffee in the morning in two minutes. Wow. Muhammad he needed a chapter in the Quran to, to help him to fight his wives. And the verse saying that if you don't repent, you women, Allah and the angels and the believers, all of them they are going to back him up. So what do you mean he can solve it? Two women versus Allah and the angels and 1.4 billion they will back up Muhammad fighting two women what kind of man he is and what kind of God he needs such a support so obviously this man each time he have a problem in his life he silence anyone including his own family members like his wives as we see in this case chapter 66 verse number four if you don't obey me I will make a verse and then God said who dare to say we don't we don't care what God said so Muhammad in order always to silence his enemies even if they are his wives because he considered them as enemies too for he is abusing them and using them in order to silence those people right away he create Quran and this is the best way he noticed that when you make a Quran there's no more argument that's it Allah said you obey it's over Indeed. I just want to jump back a little bit, really, and um, just expand on Aisha's thoughts and Muhammad's. You were saying, if I've written this down right, that he was a little bit of a, she thought he was pulling a little bit of a scam, huh? making some dodgy moves. Well, uh, obviously, Aisha, she noticed that Muhammad is not uh, uh, is not being truthful. You know, uh, why he made a verse saying that any woman she give herself to the Prophet. I mean, he already he have many wives. And then she noticed right away that this God, he rushed into his desire. Uh, uh, and you know the, the simple question we can ask for the Muslims what what Islam will accomplish from making a verse saying that God said that any woman she can sleep with the Prophet if she want I mean what the accomplishment for Islam and this is only a license for Muhammad why Muhammad he can have those license all, all, all of them all the license of Muhammad the private license is about sex money and uh, names you know like uh, Muhammad he have a special treatment in everything Muhammad he will be given a special, a special river in the in the paradise Muhammad he will, he will give in Mary the mother of Jesus and he will be given the, the wife of the Pharaoh I mean what's wrong with this guy why even well, even even in heaven a woman she is exists 600 years before him he will be given her which is an insult to the Christians to sleep with him mm. so this guy he concentrate in his benefit and he is above the law the Muslim they can marry up to four women according to Muslims understanding of the Quran okay how many wives Muhammad you have you ask any Muslim he will say to you oh because he's a prophet I never heard that because if you are a prophet that's make you make you above the law a prophet it's should be the first print yeah the a prophet he should be the best example and the first to obey not the last one to obey yeah 
Look, I've got a quick question. Yeah, let's say he's having a, a domestic argument with Aisha, and then he wants to have a revelation from Allah to justify his view. What what type of period of time does he do? Does he does he go outside and come back in a couple of hours later and be like, just had a word with God? Does he go and retreat into his cave and then come back and say, I've received some more revelations? No, not this is what I'm allowed to do. How can he then manipulate the word of God to his own benefit? First of all, there's no manipulating of word of God because this is not the word of God. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, this is just his own uh, fabrication. This guy, when he say, when he says something, he says something, and he created. You know, he is very creative. At the same time, mm -hmm. he is learning from old. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I have a I have a book is go and I'm working on it right now about the roots of the Quran. Uh, you will see that uh, uh, at his time, uh, many people they accuse him that he is copying it from people who they are uh, uh, Christians. And some they are Sabians, and uh, uh, you know Muhammad. Uh, obviously, he is copying from those people. He learned a lot from them, but what he learned, he have to change a little bit of it so he can make it that he is not uh, copying from them. As an example, if you go to chapter sixteen, verse one or three, it says, "And we know that those who uh, uh, they, they say that the one who is teaching him is a human." If you go and read behind this, you will find that they accuse him that there's a guy, as an example, his name is Adas, another person, uh, are, uh, and those are slaves who they are captured from Iraq, and supposedly they are either Nasara or Christians. And Muhammad, he used to listen to them, and he learned from them stories about uh, what is called uh, uh, the Bible. But I believe most of the stories he learned, he learned from the Nasara, which is from the rejected Bibles, like... Uh, the uh, the there's books like nobody heard of like the the uh, the Bible of uh, Paul uh, there is the the Bible of uh, Abraham or let's say the the, uh, the section of Abraham where he go to heaven and the story of of, of Paul going to heaven so well, Muhammad was was learning those stories and he used he used them to recreate stories from them you know. And uh, uh, Muhammad always he tried to say what will make him more convincing, but each time he tried to do that, it's not really he is not really successful. This is why he have a very hard time to make the Arab all the time he was in Mecca to believe in him. You know, when he went to Bani Thaqif, uh, which is in a Taif, they did beat him, they insult him. There's a guy he said to him, If if you are really a prophet, I will strip the Kaaba. The other guy, he said to him, strip the Kaaba, which is an insult, you know, which means the Kaaba, we will enclose the Kaaba, you know, which means I will, I will stop believing in, in, in God, you know, if you are a prophet. The other one, he said to him, God could not find someone else to send to us except you. So obviously, he was extremely unconvincing. And not only that, they throw rocks at him, they beat him, they broke his, 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 uh, his, uh, his uh, uh, teeth. Uh, and even he took like uh, uh, like he took a break for for some time before he arrived back to Mecca because he don't wanted people to see what happened to him there and he asked them those people of Thaqif what happened between us keep it between us which means what you did to me don't talk about it but those people they they talk and the news left all over so Muhammad and was not convincing guys, sorry pardon to interrupt you but these guys were they were they lived in the pagan gods at the time, yeah, they weren't Christians or the Jews down in Mecca. Well, you know, the the, the, the history of that uh, era is not really too much stable to to consider them what they are. However, I believe strongly they are pagans too, like Muhammad, and they believe in the Kaaba because the guy he said to him clearly, "If you are really truly a prophet, I will strip the Kaaba," which means they believe in the Kaaba. So. Uh, 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 but still, even those, because you know, remember, Muhammad is a pagan. That's the same as the rest. Muhammad did not bring a new religion. They believe in Allah. The pagans, they believe in Allah. <laughs> Many people, they think that the pagans don't believe in Allah. No, Allah is their God. Allah is their God, and they believe in the Kaaba and they kiss the black stone. So what is left? What is left is that Muhammad he don't want other gods to be around the Kaaba. He accepted only to Allah and Akbar. Akbar and Allah supposedly they merge to be one God. This is why when you see a Muslim, he says to you, Allahu u Akbar. U in Arabic mean and Allahu u Akbar. Uh, you cannot say Allah and Akbar unless they are two. Okay. So Allahu Akbar are two gods. 
Muhammad he merged them together to get as many as he can from the Arabian people to join him in his religion for those are let us say the most important uh, uh, gods and Allah himself you see Muhammad he is uh, uh, he is shown his ignorance uh, like you know uh, if you go in the Quran you will see the Quran speak about Baal you know and uh, uh, Muhammad he said to the to the uh, to the Arab like are you going to uh, you know follow Baal and uh, uh, forsake uh, the the best of the creators uh, by Muhammad by saying that he just confirmed that Allah is one of the creators and he believe in that and Baal is a creator but he is not equal to Allah so Muhammad don't understand who is even Baal anyway because I believe Baal is just another name for Allah but because it's a it's a it's a foreign language for him so he could not understand uh, what Baal is about if you go to chapter 37 verse 125 says it clearly that Allah and Baal both of them they are creators but Allah is better creator so Muhammad the one the Muslim they try to present to us that he believe in one God well obviously he don't believe in one God because how many creators we have either if you believe in one God you then you have to believe that there is one creators if you say he is the best of the creators that's mean there is many creators and then that's that's mean there is many gods but now we have a competition we have a better creator we have less quality creation it's like you know saying uh, I like cars from Germany but there's cars made in China you know what I mean so now we have two makers one is a German is better than the one the Chinese but that will not change the fact that's both of them they make cars you know what I mean? <laughs> nice, nice analogy. I like that. I like that. Before we move on, though, I think this is a good time to bring up the satanic verses. I think that fits into the old Mecca and Muhammad, you know, chatting to Allah and coming up with something that benefits himself. So, can you just talk a little bit about the satanic verses, please? You see, uh, I am I am against using it as as a, as a word as as a title, satanic verses, because I believe all Muhammad verses are satanic verses. <laughs> However, this is the one he admitted that he it, it is from Satan. You know what I mean? So yeah. this is the one he admit that Satan he cast into his mouth, but all of it is from Satan. But if you go in chapter twenty-two, verse number fifty-two, it's very uh, even 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 the way Muhammad he speak he he have a you know he have a lack of intelligence. It says, "وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ وَلَا نَبِيٍّ إِلَّا إِذَا تَمَنَّى أَلْقَى الشَّيْطَانُ فِي أُمْنِيَتِهِ." We never send a messenger before thee, but he had the same problem when he talk Shaitan he put in his mouth the words and Allah will delete it Okay, name for me Muslims the the, the prophet who Shaitan put in his mouth words and then Allah he deleted and uh, and uh, In the same time that will be a contradiction for the Quran Because the Quran say clearly that Shaitan have no authority over the one uh, who they are the, the good followers uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, of Allah, they will are protected. If you go to chapter 15, verse number 42, it says, Inna ibadi laysa laka alihum sultan. My servants, you have no authority over them except the one who follow you from the the the, the, the deceived one, the bad one, the, the filthy one. So, if Muhammad not from the deceived one and not from the filthy one. And the Quran confirm in chapter 15 42 that only this kind of people shaitan have authority over them So how shaitan was able to throw in the mouth of Muhammad? Satanic verses Additional to that the Muslim they say to us that Quran is unique and nobody can make Quran Can you make Quran? Nobody can make Quran, but here we go shaitan he make Quran Muhammad he accept the Quran he recite the Quran He bow down to the idols and Muhammad is the last one to know so if Muhammad received Quran of the devil and yet he could not recognize that this is not from the devil So how you can claim and say his Quran uh, is made only by Allah when the Quran confirm that shaitan make Quran too mm -hmm. One more thing, you know uh, as long the verse chapter uh, the one you are talking about is called satanic verses 22 52 saying that Allah will delete whatever shaitan but in the mouth of Muhammad how we know that this verse itself is not from shaitan yeah. You know what I mean 
because uh, it's just to make me relax because people didn't notice Muhammad is a scam he is in the morning he say he worship only Allah and afternoon he is with the pagans he is bowing to their idols and he is saying that Allah to Allah the three daughters of Allah their intercession is a must and we pray to them and he bow down to them so uh, people they notice Muhammad isn't is fake you know is he is not what he's saying so now yes, how we know sure. that this verse itself is not made by shaitan as long the Quran admit that shaitan made verses and give it to Muhammad Yeah, you make a good point. You make a good point now a counter argument that a lot of Muslims would say to people like myself is that you know Let's say I pick up a verse from the Quran and I start you know criticizing it. It'd be like you can't do that You can't speak Arabic. It's not the, the true Quran, but you yourself being a native Arabic speaker you they can't throw that argument at you because you can speak and not just recite the Quran in Arabic You can actually understand it as well, which is a big difference to the majority of Muslims Now would you say there's a difference between interpretation between someone who can speak Arabic and um, Whatever translate the Quran compared to a Muslim's interpretation of the Quran You know first of all, do you know what Muslim they say to me and to you? They say to you don't speak Arabic for me. They don't say to me your English is funny <laughs> <laughs> There you, go. you know so always they will they've find they've always got an answer Yeah, you know like just last week we have a Pakistani guy He called me in my in my live podcast and he was shocked because he thought I don't speak Arabic So he was going to say to me listen to me and listen 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 to the Quran in Arabic listen to Arabic I said what's wrong with you? I am an Arab. What do you mean listen to it in Arabic? It's a stupid yeah. book so <laughs> yeah so what the Muslims do first of all they, they they bring somebody he have a nice voice and he sing the Quran and then they try to have an impact on you or listening to a music like uh, you know if you bring a singer it doesn't matter what he is singing is going to sound beautiful because he have a beautiful voice you know so yes. if you if you give uh, if you give someone you like his voice and he is very well known if you give him the menu of a restaurant and he's saying it trust me is going to sound good <laughs> you know it's a menu it's nothing there and the Quran is nothing but a menu but a bad restaurant you cannot even understand what the Quran is trying to say because the Quran is suffering from a flight of thought you know as an example many people they say uh, that uh, uh, you know the the Quran have uh, uh, you know, like uh, Mac Meccan surahs and Medina surahs, right? Yeah. And many people believe that Meccan surahs are the one who are, is peaceful, and M Medina surahs are the violent one. This is not really too much accurate. You know, if you have a deep knowledge in the in Islam, you will find that it's not true, uh, uh, because you will find that what is exist, ex in the ex example in chapter of Atoba, uh, which is supposedly. Uh, most of Muslims believe that this is uh, uh, happening in Medina. You will find that verses there, they are from the time of Mecca, which means the Quran is like a salad. It's not really, we can't say these verses or those those chapters are from this and this chapter, etc. But Muhammad is making it clear. If you go to chapter 9, verse number uh, 46, it says, and if they, if they wanted to go out to prepare for war, uh, you know they will but uh, even if they will but Allah he don't want them to go because they will lose you know so stay with the stay with the one who stay so the Quran tell us why Muhammad is not going for war because he knew if he go for war right now he, go, he will go he will lose he is not qualified to win a war so people wrongly they think that Muhammad was uh, peaceful when he was in Mecca and he was harmful when he was in Medina Muhammad is Muhammad but the, the whole different is I am weak right now and I cannot do it so I wait until I can do it you know and the Quran confirmed like as an example it says that uh, uh, you uh, you you cry not for peace as long you are the uppermost and this is can be found in chapter 47 verse number 35 cry not for peace when you are the uppermost so the whole idea is when I am the uppermost I will not go for peace when I am not the uppermost no problem I go for peace but this is temporary and that is the mentality of Muhammad now the interpretation of the Quran is a different story because Muslim themselves they cannot accept each other interpretation this is why the Muslims when they finish an article or trying to make a book about Islam or 
to give interpretation for the Quran they saw at the, they say at the end Allah knows best Allah knows best as a statement is just like disclaimer you know what I mean so you don't kill me yeah, 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 yeah. like uh, because he, he will know right away there's some some people they might even seek in killing him for what he said so even the scholar in order to protect himself by disclaimer insurance he says Allah knows best so they say to him how you say that this doesn't mean that etc they say to him do you see I told you Allah knows best you know and uh, and then the, you will find that the Muslims agree about not to agree about what the verse mean and this is the only agreement they have and the reason for that the Quran was not really in Arabic the Quran never was in Arabic the Quran was an Aramaic book and what we have today is the converted version of the Aramaic book and this is why you will see the Muslims they are so confused about understanding tons of verses in the Quran because simply this is not an Arabic book and then when they try to explain it then they start guessing what does that mean you know okay I've got a quick question for you then um correct me if I'm wrong here Uthman a third rightly guided caliph he was the one who got rid of all the other versions of the Quran no, he wanted to have one text to learn Islam from essentially and everything else he just wanted to burn and get rid of so there was just one book to go to so he didn't want the controversy that was associated with the different Christian Bibles and the different chapters there how did he go about compiling that then and what was there a lot lost like what did Uthman actually do you see what we have a story about Uthman I believe is not too much uh, true because uh, there's we don't have a book of Uthman do Muslims have the book of Uthman they don't yeah. So how we can be sure that Uthman, he made this book we have, or the Muslim they print in Saudi Arabia. And there's many versions of the Quran exist right now. As an example, if you go to Morocco, the Quran is different from the Morocco and in, 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 uh, from the Saudi one. When the Saudi get the oil, they start printing a version. They accept to be the version of Uthman book, but nobody have the Uthman book. So yeah. speaking too much about Uthman, there's no proof of it that Uthman uh, book is exist. Secondly, uh, Uthman, according to Muslims, he burned the Quran, as you said, uh, because uh, obviously those other Qurans are different. And that will raise many questions, why they are different. And uh, who is Uthman? Who gave the authority to Uthman even to do so? You know, uh, the Muslim, they get uh, uh, angry from a person who burned the Quran when the first one who burned the Quran was their caliph. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Which doesn't make sense. But uh, uh, the, the Quran says, that the one who will collect the Quran is Allah you know it's not Uthman it's not even Muhammad this is why in the beginning uh, like there's a statement that says uh, uh, we fought them for collecting it for, for writing it and we fought, we fought them for preserving it which mean it was not really uh, Muhammad did not say that uh, to to write the Quran did not did not say that in chapter 75 verse number 17 it says Inna alayna jam'uhu wa Qur'anahu It is on us to collect the Qur'an and to recite the Qur'an. So Muslims, for them, it's not their duty to collect the Qur'an. Same time, what is the Qur'an of Muhammad? Why we need even the Qur'an of Uthman? You know? Because remember, Uthman, he's just like, he, he's a companion of Muhammad. And there is no way that Muhammad, he have a book. And then the Muslims don't have it. I mean, uh, okay, you say to us that the Christians corrupted their book. You could not preserve the book of your prophet for a few years after his death. You know what I mean? There's, there's, sure. there's tons of places speaking about Muhammad. He have Quran. As an example, in the Hadith, Aisha, she said that when uh, uh, when Muhammad, he uh, passed away or died from poison, uh, uh a goat or a sheep came inside the house and uh, grabbed the Quran from under the bed of Muhammad or the pillow of Muhammad and she ate the Quran and this is, can be found in, in, in Sunat Ibn Majah so the goat who ate the Quran uh, how how the goat can eat the Quran if there's no Quran hold on here it just right Muhammad's death first of all I'm not too familiar with that of course as you just said he got poisoned so I'd love to talk to that talk about that a little bit but a goat ate the only copy of the Quran after his death that sounds well this, crazy. Is, what, this is what Ayesha she said you know this it says 
the the verse of Estonian. I'm, I'm reading for you the Islamic translation, not my translation. For me, I read Arabic. I don't care for the translation, but I will use their own uh, just to, to show the Muslims that this is how it is. Uh, the verse says it clearly. Let us put it in the screen for those who they are watching so they can see with us. Uh, uh, the verse of Estonian and the breastfeeding for adult 10 time was revealed and the paper was with me actually it doesn't say paper this is called uh, uh, Sahifa Sahifa is like sheets uh, was under my pillow when the messenger of Allah died we were preoccupied of with his death uh, and a, a tam sheep came and ate it that's it you know so now we have based on this story a goat who ate the Quran uh, if not all of it Aisha here is mentioning two chapters or two stories uh, the verses about the breastfeeding for adult and maybe you do not know about this uh, Muhammad he ordered them by from the Quran that Muslim women she can give her breast to feed an adult who is a stranger and the, the breastfeeding by the way here is not about drinking milk because women they don't have milk always you know I mean all of us we knew women they have milk only when they give birth you know uh, a woman is not a cow and she have a faucet you open her nipples and she have milk so <laughs> Uh, a woman she is not really even too much young I mean she is uh, she she don't have babies and this is why even they adopted a child uh, or, a, or a person uh, when when Muhammad uh, she come, came to Muhammad to complain about her husband is jealous from this man because he look at her Muhammad he says give him your breast let him suck at it so this is not about milk have nothing to do with milk and this is a breastfeeding for adult which means it's just sucking the nipples of women and we do not know how in the world if a man having dirty look at the women in a sexual way if a woman she gave her nipples to him that will stop him that will make him go crazy more but this is the logic of Muhammad and obviously he's making fun of them you know whatever Muhammad he says they take it they accept it they, they practice it you know there's no uh, let us say there's no logic in the logic <laughs> that's a great expression yeah. now you were saying there before that one of the you know chapters that the goat ate was talking about men breastfeeding there's a, a lot of allusion towards um sexual activity in the islamic scriptures isn't there uh, well you know uh, all of islam is based on uh, based on money and sex so like if you oh, go yes, to heaven yes. if you go to heaven what you will get uh, uh muhammad you describe your house as a brick loads of, gold. of virgins yeah, oh, no, houses no. as well i didn't know this yeah well. but everything starting from the from the second you enter first of all allah will make you white because no black people are allowed to enter heaven <laughs> Everybody have to be white. Oh yeah, Every, everyone have to be white. You know, uh, uh, if in the Quran you see Muhammad, he was so clear, and the Muslim they try to to fool people about those verses. So Muhammad he said that in the day of judgment, chapter three, verse one o six, يوم تبيض وجوه وتسود وجوه. The day, the faces will turn white and the faces will turn black. The Muslim they try to make it as the day they will be faces will be happy and faces will be sad this another doesn't say that if you go to make a theory you go to the scholars you go to an interpretation especially the oldest one you see that it says it clearly that there's a beast his name is a just Sasa if we go to chapter uh, uh, of an animal verse number 82 uh, it says that uh, uh, the this beast a just Sasa uh, is going to uh, come from from the gray from the ground and uh, uh, you know uh, she will hit the believer and the disbeliever by the stick of Musa's and the ring of Solomon and the believer will turn totally white and the disbeliever will turn totally black so it's literally about being a black and being white and Allah and not only that when people before they enter paradise uh, people they sit together and then right away they will not notice who is a Muslim who is not how because he's white so when you see a black person that's mean he is a bad person he is a disbeliever and when you see a white person that's mean he's a good Muslim he's a, he's a he's a Muslim so Islam is extremely racist religion as an example Muhammad he says uh, kill any black animal pure black animal and he said uh, when they ask him about why he ordered to kill black uh, uh, dogs as an example he said the black dog is the devil now I challenge any Muslim to tell me why the black dog is the devil now about sex we, we did not cover the point of sex so racism racism about being white this is why Muhammad he promised the, the Muslim men 
uh, very white women to the point you can see their bones and he promised them that you will have gold and silver in the heaven even your house will be one brick of gold one brick of silver and the land will be from rubies and uh, your house will be made from pearls then the virgins and those virgins simply they are sexually made uh, for a, for the purpose of, of one purpose which is sex but I find the story is very stupid because uh, additional that it is a fiction and you know but imagine all women imagine I somebody he came to your door now in earth and he delivered to you you know delivery shipping coming from Hong Kong and he opened the container and you find 70 women or 80,000 women but all of them they have one name and they have the same eyes and they have the same look so what the point <laughs> that's a good point isn't it I mean all of them they look point. the same they all all of them all of them they have a name who yeah. they don't have names their name is who all of them they have the same face the same eyes all of them they have black eyes and etc all of them they have the same shape all of them in one age all of them in the even their the breast size is the same exactly copy paste so what the point of having sex with all those women is all of them are the same women imagine you have one wife and God he copied for you ten of her I mean what the point yeah. you know what, that, that does, makes no sense I never knew that it's a madness you know this Islam is a, is a religion of stupidity and the, the more and the more you are stupid the more you believe in it you know? yeah indeed 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 so Back to sex, Islam, I suppose, forget sex, masturbation. There's a lot of rules and guidelines as to how to masturbate within Islam, isn't there? Well, you know, the Muslims, they have a lot of weird stuff. As an example, you can masturbate with watermelon. Watermelon. You, <laughs> you can, you can masturbate. Try it later. Yeah, I, 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 don't want, I, I do not need to give reference. Anyone is listening, he can just go and type right now. Uh, Islam, uh, you know, sex with watermelon or sex with da or sex with the statues or sex with the... Uh, with the even with Muslim women they can do masturbation like they can use a, a, a cut off penis uh, or they can make uh, use a crumbage which is a piece of leather round as a sex toy so uh, obviously the Muslims they have sex toys long before anyone uh, have them before a playboy even actually Muhammad uh, uh, you know he he mentioned that in the heaven of Allah there is a market and this market have no buying nor selling except pictures and if a believer if a believer man he like the image he enter it and he will have sex with it so even playboy magazine was created before muhammad long before the playboy magazine in america no? wow now why watermelons is there some kind of law forbidding you from using your hands is that frowned upon well, you know, uh, you see, the Muslim they have an idea that there is no shame in religion. This is why, if you watch Islamic TV, it's kind of like a comedy. Uh, I remember once a Muslim woman she called the TV, and she said, uh, obviously she is, uh, excuse my language, obviously she is a whore, and she is making fun of those two guys, the, the scholars, the sheikhs in the TV, uh, because she's, you know, she, she make them sweat. She's she's talking in a very horny way, uh, and then she starts saying, when I take off my clothes. The fish they start shaking, and then the shake he drank the water like as he's thirsty for ten years, you know he is really sweating, and uh, obviously she made him excited, and then he said to her sister, um, uh, obviously those uh, those fish they have a genie and they are looking at your beautiful pure body, so I advise you not to take off your clothes in the front of the fish tank, so she said, but this is the only room I have, what I can do, then the shake. He said, "Well, uh, well, in this case, you better cover it by a blanket." <laughs> so, it, it, uh, sexuality in Islam is about everything. Because imagine, even fish is going to masturbate when she see a Muslima. So the fish is shaking in the fish tank because she is taking off her clothes. Muslim believe even that uh, uh, w their women they, they cheat on them by having sex with the genie. But they don't consider it as a cheating because they knew it is like, like a, a, the genie is powerful and he can do that. So uh, once a guy, he called the TV station, he said once he opened the door uh, and he found his wife doing something, you know. And so he's asking the sheikh what he should do. He said, uh, uh, obviously your wife, she is having an affair with the genie. The best way to, uh, to get rid of him is to read Quran. <laughs> read Quran. 
That's nuts, isn't it? Now look, what's the logic behind Muslim women wearing burqas and things along those lines? Because, you know, I've kind of understand it in my head, but I've, I'm kind of a little bit confused, let's say. Is it to stop the men from just being over-sexually uh, compulsed, if that's even a word, to go on, you know, have sex with them? Or is it to kind of like prevent the women from molesting the men? Like, what's the deal? Is it to stop men from being sexually attracted to women and just going crazy? Well, you know, Muhammad, he made uh, an image for the women uh, uh, as, a, as a devil. Muhammad, he said literally, mm -hmm. <laughs> that the women she come yeah this is how he said he said the women she come she advance and retires in the shape of the devil so one of you sees a woman he should come to his wife and for you know that will reveal what is in his heart so muhammad he told them clearly that all women are shaitan just by seeing a woman you are seeing a shaitan so uh, uh, no matter what you do you are going to be excited by looking at the women that's what it is. And uh, Muhammad, he, he he mentioned that women they have many uh, many aura aura in Arabic. It's a uh, uh, it is something shame to show. You should not you should not expose in uh, in public. But you see the the aura we know usually it's like your private part, you know, or the women breast for a woman, uh, you know, like to show reveal things should not be revealed. But in Islam, all the women is aura. Muhammad he says the women. Uh, when she get married, she cover only one aura, which means she secure one part. That is her, her vagina. And when she die, when she die, she cover all. So she is aura, all of her. You know, she have ten aura. Her voice is aura. Her face is aura. Her hands is aura. All of them they are private part. And when she get married, she cover only one aura. When she die, she cover them all. So the only way for a woman to be uh, you know for her private part is not going to be exposed as death but Muhammad the funny you know the, the hypocrisy about Muhammad when he said that the women she and she come and retire in the shape of a devil then we need to ask ourselves if the woman is a devil she come in a uh, shape of a devil and she live in the image of the devil why Muhammad he have 13 devils at home they are wives and God knows how many hundreds of sex slaves if oh. they are devils why he want to have from it's, them as much as he can indeed it's like it's void of logic islam huh it's like they throw all these things and if you actually start investigating going deep just uh, the mathematics behind it you know the calculations it just doesn't add up it makes no sense uh, you know if you want to talk about sense in islam nothing makes sense like what, what <laughs> what's what sense it when muhammad he says that allah will make the penis of the muslim man english i mean imagine uh, uh, imagine a man he have an endless penis what he can do with it <laughs> Imagine you have a woman next to you, but your your penis is in different galaxy. And what you what you would do? You would call him to come back, make a U turn, you know. So all the stories Muhammad he come with is kind of madness. And to speak yeah. about uh, make sense, that is the last thing you know. It's it's like uh, you are making a uh, what they call it the dark comedy, like uh, yeah, uh, Muhammad and sense. Like what it makes sense that you will have an orgasm of seventy years, you know. <laughs> So it's pretty much your life, huh? Yeah, like you know, you go to visit Muhammad, you know, you knock at the door, you know, Muhammad is having orgasm, you can hear him. So you come next year. <laughs> next year you come, you know, you you go around the world and you come back. And then you knock at the door, Muhammad is still have orgasm. You come next year, the year after, and the year after, and the year after, and Muhammad is still having orgasm. You go and you swim and you make a you you you, you visit Hong Kong, you visit uh, Philippines, you visit uh, Japan you visit uh, uh, Sydney you come back Muhammad is still having orgasm I mean how in the world we can speak about logic when it's come to this man it's true it's amazing he had time for anything else yeah uh, what you know what, well Muslims uh, you know always Muslims when they hear things which is really obviously stupid right away they will say to you those hadith are weak anything you say to them it's weak it's weak mm -hmm. now if we say to the Muslims what is logic in the Quran to describe for us the boobs of the women? Hadith is weak. Anything we say is weak. Is the Quran is weak? Why we, why we need to know the size of the women boobs in the Quran? What is exactly the point of that? Obviously, but you know, all of Islam is a mad religion. What, what kind of God do you want to promise me that in the heaven I'm going to have a bracelet? 
I can go to the mall right oh. now and I can get and get ten of them. I mean, what bracelet? And uh, what the point of a promise me I will have a couch? <laughs> you know, come, come, come here. These are the incentives. These are the incentives. Yes, yeah? so you die, go to heaven. Yeah, you I mean, get a bracelet you, you, and a nice couch. So those, you know, you you go to heaven and then you find there a couch. I mean, that's it. Come, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, come here. In, come here in America. You know, drive it through like uh, during the day, or they collect garbage, and you will see how many couches in the street, and they are new. You put TV. Yeah. You put TV here in the street. Nobody take it. The big screen TV. So you know, couches, uh, bracelet. Uh, 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 pillows I mean pillows Allah he promising me pillow uh, you know yeah. so uh, the promises obviously they are made for those Arab who they are poor Bedouin they dream to have this because this for them this is a fantasy this is something yeah. they never saw before so now he is promising me uh, a garden and have a grape grape believe it a grape we will eat a grape in the heaven and you will have uh, 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 clear water. Pomegranates. Yeah, yeah clear water. Bananas as well as a big incentive. Yeah, and even the water is clear because finally, you know, those people they suffer from the uh, from from drinking water because most of it, it's because they don't have springs of water. You know, so the water is salty. You know, if you uh, I don't know if you've been in Saudi Arabia or any in the Gulf countries, uh, water there, even if you find it, it is not healthy. It is salty. This is why you see. Uh, in countries like Saudi Arabia when they build uh, you will see a Saudi guy he built a nice villa and then after 10 years the villa is coming down apart why because the sand is full of salt the concrete is full of salt and they cannot get rid of it the water itself is full of salt so when you build concrete or you build a building and the building contain a lot of salt that's mean the concrete is weak because salt is salt you know uh, yeah. So, the, he promised them uh, 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 clear water. Finally, we will have a clean water. He promised them that you will not have uh, uh, heat. You know, well, this is a promise you make for somebody living in Saudi Arabia. But somebody living in Alaska, if you say to him, yeah. I will, I will, "Yeah, I will give you a heaven," or or, or, or even you in England, like you know, <laughs> you know, most yeah. of, most of the year you have the sun is not there. So imagine I promise you you will go to heaven and this heaven have always rain I mean or, or you will never see the Sun or you will never have heat I mean this is uh, people they pay money to go and lay down under the Sun in many places you know they even they have fake machines to to uh, to, to get the, to get that so the promises is made for a Bedouin man who live in the desert fit with his mentality mm. and this mentality is they like as an example the Arab they love to drink they are drunken nation so Muhammad he promised them rivers of wine not not a cup of wine rivers and then they mm -hmm. like honey so river of honey they like milk river of milk you know so all but, all those rivers uh, are just to satisfy the needs of a Bedouin man if you if, but, if, uh, if the followers of Muhammad are from Germany Muhammad he will add a river of beer <laughs> yeah, 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 I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some bratwurst as well, a nice sausage for the Germans. Yeah, and some some uh, some uh, some hamburger too, and shish kebab. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Look, I tried to interrupt you twice, and I said a butt and a butt and a butt, and then my question has gone. So that's annoying. But I still want to discuss this topic, which is free will within Islam. Can you discuss that a little bit, please? Well, in Islam, there is no. Uh... Uh, there's no th nothing is called the free will you see the mm. uh, the Islam is all of it is about based on something is called Al-Qadr the Muslim he cannot be a Muslim if you don't believe uh, uh, if you don't believe in Al-Qadr which means destiny uh, all the Quran is based on this uh, as an example Muhammad he make it so clear that when when a person before he is born Allah he write his destiny many many years before uh, you know he come to existence as an example there's a story in the hadith about uh, uh, Moses and uh, Adam uh, they have a debate they have an argument uh, Moses said to Adam let me put it in the screen so people they can see it uh, uh, Moses says to Adam because of you uh, we are out of paradise so Moses he said to uh, Adam he said to Moses 
do you blame me uh, uh, for something Allah he wrote for me in my destiny 40 years before he created me so even the sin of Adam was not a choice for Adam and Muhammad he says and this is how Adam was able to overcome uh, Musa's argument so the, 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 the correct answer is the sin of Adam was not his choice it was written for him 40 years before his creation and this is the hate in the front of us for those who they are seeking reference in YouTube 40 years before the creation of Adam uh, Adam he commit you know uh, Allah he wrote for him his sin and it says there are you going to blame me for which Allah had or denied for me 40 years before my creation so uh, uh, which is which is very stupid by the way because if Adam he commits sin and that was the plan of Allah and Allah is the one who wrote the sin for him as a destiny so why Allah he punish Adam and he kick him out of heaven it doesn't make sense but as we said nothing in Islam makes sense and the same for everything Muhammad he said that one of you will do the work of people of heaven and that there is a distance of a cubit between him and the gate of heaven and then what is written by Allah will take over and he will start doing the act of people of hellfire and he will go to hellfire and then he said vice versa when a, when a person if you're doing the, the act of uh, hellfire and then what is written all his life the deed of hellfire and then uh, what is written by Allah will take over and then he will start doing the uh, the deeds of uh, of paradise and then he enter paradise so go into hell go into paradise is not really based on your deeds Muhammad he make it so clear it is based in what Allah he wrote for you as a destiny which means you convert to Islam you don't convert to Islam it's a stupid idea because it is written for you already where you will go uh, 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 one more thing just to make it more uh, clear uh, there is a story of a child who died uh, and Aisha she said to Muhammad there is a you know there is a, a paradise for this uh, for this child for he is a bird from the birth of paradise you know I mean this guy he's just an infant he die and he will be in heaven so Muhammad he rebuked her and he said to her don't say that for Allah he created for heaven who is in for heaven and who is for hell who is for hell before he created them so which mean here sin have nothing to do with going to hell and heaven uh, are you getting my idea uh, Ben mm -hmm. that is he's, he's an infant he's a child he's you know Aisha she said it clearly that this child he did not even reach the age of committing sin but Muhammad is still did not like what she said that he guaranteed to go to heaven for he Allah he decided he wrote his destiny before he created him so the idea of Islam Islam is a full form of contradiction as we said before in one place says that if you commit sin you go to you go to hell if you just obey Allah, obey Allah you go to hell blah 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 and then here we see a child who is a son of a Muslim family and yet he will not go to heaven guaranteed because Allah he wrote before he created him if he will go to heaven or he will go to hell but yet he have no sin in the Bible we find the opposite Jesus said if you don't if you don't became like those the little ones you will not enter the heaven so uh, 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 which means the children are going to go to heaven Muhammad he have a totally different idea that heaven have nothing to do with your deeds however by the way in different places he contradict himself he speak of deeds like the Quran says those who do good deeds etc 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 paradise for them here we find the opposite and this is I've got a quick is question then, and can you just see if I've got the right end of the stick with this? So if there's no free will within Islam and Allah's already got everything planned out for you, people who then go and, you know, do horrible terrorist atrocities and go murder people in the name of Islam and actually get away, you know, not get away, but actually do commit murder, murder people, for their fellow Muslims, do they think, well, because he actually achieved this attack, it was the will of God and he did God's asking and then how can I judge him because this is what God wanted is that correct I don't know if you watch any videos of Isis with the translation but in Arabic they say uh, in chapter 8 verse number 17 uh, you did not kill them but Allah is the one who killed them 
I did not shoot my arrow it was the arrow of Allah so when the, the Muslim he taught in the Quran and this is Quranic verse this is not uh, a hadith when 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 Allah he told them uh, it's yes it is you you hold the sword it's you who killed them but in fact it's not you who killed them it is Allah it is not you who shoot it is Allah and the verses in the front of those who want to read from the Muslims in case they are listening you see we don't we don't say things without proof and reference and we make it clear for everybody so you did not slow them it was Allah who did slew them and you did not shoot it was Allah who shoot so what is left of the crime nothing it is Allah who did it and uh, uh, but in, when it's about a crime you see the Muslim they have uh, two sections crime is to kill a Muslim mm -hmm. but it is not a crime to kill non-Muslims the Muslim they lie to us they say the Quran says if a person killed uh, an innocent man as if he killed all mankind that verse mm -hmm. is about killing a believer mm -hmm. oh, okay yeah they lied they lie to you because they don't know Arabic and you do not know that you don't you don't have a good knowledge in Islam so they quote always even Obama he was quoting for us this verse but this verse is not about killing non-Muslims because Muhammad all Quran is Quran chapter 9 verse 29 there's many verses uh, clearly saying go and fight those who don't believe in Allah and don't believe in Muhammad and last day etc from the Christian and the Jews that's the reason why because they don't believe in Allah and Muhammad he sent the three letters to three kings saying convert or else Aslam Taslam you you wanna you wanna be safe convert and and here we see that Allah he's saying to them it's not you who slew them it is Allah it's not you who shoot your arrow it was Allah this why when a terrorist he shoot at you uh, uh, you know like in the field in the, in the we see in the video he say wa ma ramaytu wa innam Allah rama wa ma ramayt it's it is Allah who it's not me who shoot it's Allah who's shooting so the Muslim are convinced based on their religion and the Quran that when they shoot it's Allah shooting when they kill so how uh, just a quick question so how if you're a devout Muslim someone who follows Islam and, and you know you believe with all, with all your heart can you criticize the actions of Isis uh, you know, as a Muslim you cannot criticize anything Islam is about yeah. you see the most many people they say Islam means submission that's a, that's a absolutely false Islam mean you surrender so the second you start a questioning you are an apostate you can, really? you can oh yeah you start questioning you're an apostate straight away you see all the verses of killing in Islam is about apost apostasy mm -hmm. you know like some naive ones like you have a you have a guy his name uh, I forgot what his name somebody tell me guys the guy in England he have a show is it Nawaz Nawaz Bajid Nawaz yeah yeah in his show he said that uh, 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 you know uh, Islam it says there is no complosion in religion etc but this verse is not about really what he is it is idiot he's saying this verse is saying that Muhammad he heard the news that the Jews uh, they are not allowed in their children to 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 believe in Islam so Muhammad he said to them you cannot force your children not to convert to Islam but Muhammad he will kill them if they will leave Islam and if you go uh, uh, you know uh, uh, in, 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 the, in the Quran you, you will find it clearly that the Quran is speaking that's with no doubt that you have to do jihad against anyone who questioned the authority of the Prophet and the question the authority of Allah uh, so when when a, when a person he's you know he speak to us about uh, uh, Islam is not forcing you to convert or not forcing you to believe or you can leave Islam that is a false statement and have nothing to do with the truth uh, all all the words of Islam is about apostasy and there's something people do not notice that the Muslim believe that every person is born as a Muslim Muhammad he, he taught his followers I don't know if you heard this before the Muslims everybody you and me the Hindus the Buddhas everybody is born as a Muslim and then his That's family they use the expression of revert to Islam don't they not convert you revert uh -huh. because you're all yeah Muslim. right this is why they say the word revert because simply you used to be a Muslim but your family made you Christian or a Jew or a Hindu or a Buddha so uh -huh. uh, uh, everyone is born a Muslim but he leave you know the religion and because of that 
so he have to be killed so all the war as an example if you go to chapter 9 verse number 73 it says ya ayyuha nabi jahid al kuffar wal munafiqin so uh, 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 the muslim they translate they say oh prophet you know do jihad against the kuffar we know who is the kuffar those who refuse to believe in muhammad as a prophet okay who is the munafiqin those are the apostate so when somebody like this guy uh, Nawaz he said there's in Islam there's in the Quran there's no verses speaking about King apostate he's just he's speaking his ignorance so mm -hmm. fight those who they are kuffar and those who they are ex-muslims the apostate now who is the ex-muslim all of us including the Muslim who leave Islam today or the one who is born as a Muslim but they uh, you know they uh, you know they decide to leave Islam later so all the killing in Islam is about uh, is a killing of an apostate mistakenly people think that when when jihad is carried on is jihad against someone he is a Christian only the fact those for the Muslims he is not a Christian he is an apostate of course we're all apostates as we've all left everybody is, not, you know, yeah. it was a you know a conscious choice we've all left Islam Yes, this is this is uh, all, and there is no question. You know, uh, uh, there is there, uh, always. You know, the, the 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 problem is when you try to reach out to knowledge, and you don't speak Arabic, and you don't have a good knowledge. Even if you speak Arabic, it's not enough really uh, uh, to to get the, the the clear meaning because you have to study hard, you have to research, you have to find things, you have to connect the dots together. You know, studying Islam is the same as. Uh, uh, an investigator trying to find who did the crime because the Quran is like uh, uh, imagine you have a you have I, I give you a uh, summarize and then I, I give you one gallon of sand and then I say to you okay this is the sand and this is the rice and I mix them together and then find out which is sand and which is rice so you have to spend a lot of time trying to find out where we can find the rice and where is the sand in Islam there's a lot of sand which make will make you confused will, 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 verses are not connected the Quran verses have nothing to do with each other most of the time the, the, the Quran author is suffering from flight of thoughts and this is why yeah you know you, you see suddenly one verse he's talking about uh, the flying carpet the second verse is talking about something else so uh, uh, there is no connection between them however uh, 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 if you go as an example to chapter 9 verse number 73 and verse number 74 those two verses are very much connected and they explain each other Muhammad he have to do jihad against the unbelievers and against the hypocrites and do do jihad against them and then verse number 74 explain who are the those the munafiqeen it says those who they are after leaving Islam they left Islam so a person who do not know he will tell you there's not even a single verse in the Quran is speaking of that but all of us we knew there is a war it's called the war of apostate and this war happened right away after Muhammad death and the one who carried it is Abu Bakr so was Abu Bakr not a good believer there's no Muslim will dare to say no except if he's a Shia so uh, uh, apostate apostasy war is exist from the time of Muhammad for all the wars of Islam is the wars of apostasy. The Muslim, they say to you, we are born with fitrah. What is fitrah? Fitrah is to be a Muslim. Mm -hmm. You are born as a Muslim. Yeah. Now, look, just to focus on this a little bit, you were talking about, you know, wars and stuff like that. You've got what? Dar al Salam and then Dar al Haub, yeah, which is the, the land of, what is it, land of Islam and then the land of war. Now, any place that's not run under Islamic you know the sharia law is the dara hub yes the land of war what do you feel if that's the case if that's how they look at us how do you feel about the rise of islam in western countries i believe the rise of islam if we can use that term is exist because of the western ignorance you see the western uh -huh. they, they sponsor islam for a long time and until now they are doing that if you go in any media tv stations like i just last week i saw uh, a news about uh, a uk police promoting islam in a video is that correct yeah okay how do you do that I mean it's a it's a it's a madness so yeah. we don't want to speak about the race of Islam we want to want to speak about the race of the stupidity in the West 
Islam. <laughs> well, I'm honest with you. Cook. I'm honest with you. There is no place for Islam in the West unless there is a stupid people in the West. And this is what we, we are suffering from. We have a lot of stupid, ignorant people who have no idea what they are doing. They are bringing the devil to their houses and they are seeking destruction of their own countries. Otherwise, Islam have no place anywhere. You know, go to Saudi Arabia. Where is Islam? Even, even in Saudi Arabia, <laughs> terrorists have no place. So how come they can find a place in England? I just told in the news that 454 uh, uh, fighters of ISIS, right now as we speak, they came back from Syria to England. How you allowed them to get in? Four hundred. We, we don't think twice. Yeah, fi fine. Al almost 500 fighters who they are trained for years how to make bombs. You know, you, you, you will have fun. You will have a lot of fun in England soon. So 500 people, you allowed them to get in. How this happened? Where is the, the intelligence? Where is the police? Where is the government? Where is, obviously, the West, is suffering from big problem Islam is not the problem the problem is the Western who have no idea what they are doing you see like imagine imagine you you, you bring me a Cobra huh, in a box and you say to yeah. me don't open the box there's a Cobra there all right and then I open the Cobra box and I call I give her a name and I think it's a bet it's a cute it's a Cobra you know the cobra is a cobra and this is exactly what the Western are doing to themselves so I don't want to play in the Muslims and the race of Islam I don't believe there's something that's called the race of Islam but what happened you see the atheism attack of Christianity for the last centuries in Europe so Western they became empty and the believers are you know not not many so Islam fine you know and, and like you grow in a family and then you start searching around you and looking around you and if somebody want to believe in a religion what what is the religion is available the atheist they fought Christianity and they will not even allow it to breathe they find only one place where nobody stopped that religion it's called Islam so the atheists they were only attacking Christianity like lately some atheists they start speaking against Islam lately few of them but for all the time for the last 40 50 years nobody spoke one word against Islam and this is why we are here why I am doing what I am doing because I found that somebody have to do the dirty job you know to clean the garbage indeed well look you're doing a great job doing so why do you think after the 9-11 attacks then uh, it was George Bush coming out and referring to Islam as the religion of peace and all of this why was this narrative put into the mainstream when it was obviously quite apparent that these guys are here to cause us harm uh, you know as I said you know the West is suffering from a stupidity not from intelligence you know uh, uh, like you know not only this each time the Muslim they attack you you're like like lately they don't they, they stop doing that but if you notice in the last almost 10 years each time the Muslim they do an attack one of our prime minister or president doesn't matter what country in the West like all the way from Australia to Canada mm -hmm. to USA to England right away you will see the prime minister the minister the foreign minister voluntarily he says Islam mean peace I mean like even Obama each time they attack he said do you remember the crusade <laughs> the yeah. crusade exactly. the crusade is the best thing happened to the European because if not the crusade all of Europe will be Muslims long time ago uh -huh. it was the crusade who stopped the Muslims people don't want to see the truth that the crusade they told them in schools that the crusade are bad they are criminals they are disgusting the crusade is the one who saved Europe and this is the truth you know ask yourself how come for the first six centuries after Jesus we never have a crusade we never have a crusade needed. we have a crusade only after the Muslims attacked us so yeah. the Muslim attacked us and then when you attack back you are the bad I never heard of anyone speaking about the attack of the Muslims but they speak against the crusade and this is telling you that the mentality in the West was one-sided run by the liberals who tried to put Christianity down so what they have what we can say about Christ we cannot say much really Christ did not do something bad so now let us find something it's the crusade but the fact what the crusade was the best thing that the, the, the European they did in their history now for sure there's mistakes and in it's a war there's always bad and good but the crusade is what saved Europe to be Europe and now because the Muslims they don't face a crusade no more they face a bunch of ignorant 
who have no idea what Islam is about. They've been taught nothing about it. And not only this, the media, the prime minister, the president, he keeps saying Islam is a wonderful religion. Muhammad was a peaceful man. Islam means peace. So, and even you see a, a, a church priest, a church priest has come back. He invite Muslim to teach Islam, to teach children, Christian children, how to pray to Allah. Yeah. I've seen that a few times. It's horrible. Yeah, We've I mean, got I, what, English what, what, church is populated with old English white, you know, it doesn't matter their race, but still stereotypical English people. Yeah. And then you've got an Arab at the top singing the songs from the Quran. It's like, what are you doing here? Because not for a second, not for a second, would uh, you know, an Imam allow a Christian to come in and recite the Lord's Prayer in a mosque. You see, this is why I was saying, even even those who call themselves Christians are siding with the devil. So the the problem. For me, I don't see it. It is Islam. It is the stupidity in the West, and we need to find ignorance. You know, the, the Bible says, "My nation been destroyed because of their ignorance." And when you are ignorant, anything can destroy you. You know, yeah. anything. Damn. Damn right. Predictions for the future, my friend. What do you think Europe's going to look like? You know, even North America could say Australia is worth you include the Western world. If it continues like this over the next 15, 20, 30 years, how do you think society is uh, going to change? I believe Europe is going to suffer a civil war. In, in 30 40 years not only necessarily because of Muslims but because you have you know uh, you have only, soon you will have more immigrant than citizen and then that will yeah. make you make you feel as a minority and you will feel unjust and then there's many people will bear arms and they will go for war and it's a it's a you know the, the European countries are seeking destruction of their own land like just to last last week uh, I, uh, I saw a, uh, a study that in the city of Stuttgart in Germany the German they are the minority now you know the first time the first time in their history the German people in Stuttgart they are so imagine you live in a city and this is your city of your grandfather and grand 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 grandfather and then suddenly you are a minority and the second you turn to be a minority that is the turning point where you are going to lose everything because you know don't you believe in democracy okay democracy the the, the majority they will win <laughs> as simple as that yeah. you know this is democracy indeed yeah, yeah. well I, I see it in person there's a very famous place in london called camden camden market it's just north london it's a cool eclectic place that people come to and have fun and the last time i was in there i, I played this little game and you know once again pardon the expression but it's just the lack of indigenous people around were crazy i said spot the white guy and i was driving for about three or four minutes that's a lie i parked up i was driving and it's not even about the white people, it's the fact that it's the dress as well. You know, if it was just loads of different races dressed in suits or maybe you know, a pair of jeans and a shirt with a paper and whatever, that's I wouldn't even blink twice. It's the fact that they're all they look more kind of um at home on a Star Wars planet, really, than in you know in North London. And it's very odd to see, and it's just it's crazy. And you're walking through your hometown, you're you know, the capital of your own country, and just thinking what is happening here it's There's those that go to Wembley it's the same thing in Wembley it's just like you're in the Middle East it's nuts to witness yeah it's a backstand this is a backstand I have nothing to do with, with even Middle East even because Middle East we don't have those uh, people you have there you know mm. uh, uh, and you see I notice I, I've been in, in England uh, I noticed that the English government they welcome the more you are into terrorism the more you are welcome if you see if you see <laughs> any any terrorist who is wanted in his country he always go and seek refuge in England and that will make what what will will make me always a question the legitimacy of the British intelligence and the government I mean what what is the point of hosting those terrorists they knew they are terrorists like as an example Abu Qatada is wanted for a long time in Jordan wanted in Lebanon yeah. uh, what his name and Jam Shawadri uh, all of them uh, uh, yeah uh, 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 every one of them is wanted somewhere so why you are uh -huh. bringing them to your country that is a question the British citizen they should actually if I am a citizen in England I'm, I'm going to make a case against the government you know and I'm going to bring to justice those who allowed those people to have their citizenship not only they bring, they give them refugees as asylum they give them salary because the second you accept him as a refugee you get him apartment you get him uh, remember I, I remember when I was I was in England I was uh, you know studying uh, a Muslim guy he said to me I was looking for an apartment to rent he said to me you can rent my apartment I look at him this guy I, he don't look like he's wealthy he said you have an apartment he said well you know I'm a refugee so 
but don't you use it he said none of us, none of us use his apartment so what they do they like four or five of them they sit in one apartment and that apartment is given by the government too and then they rent out the the apartment which is given by the government yeah they pay no tax Indeed. they have a free housing free electricity free water tax free and then they work the the one who work in restaurant the one who work as a taxi driver but nobody ta pay tax in a few years this guy he will be rich and he will be poor because simply you pay a lot of tax he don't do pay he not only he don't pay he he get paid he have a free housing he have a free insurance he have a free education he have a f everything is a free so the system in England is very stupid and somebody that the, the English people they have to make kind of a revolution against the government uh, uh, stupidity and change it mm -hmm. and make everything change uh, I, I like like some uh, some European leaders in in Europe like uh, uh, the the president of Czechoslovakia the president of uh, uh, Hungary and you know like those people they are really firm and they are sure not uh, Poland they will not accept people to come to their countries and this is the smart way you know I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not again you see me myself I'm an immigrant myself right me myself I'm yeah. an immigrant but you don't be stupid I mean there's a limitation you know there's a limitation mm -hmm. and if you even if you all the countries in the world if they welcome immigrant they welcome the quality doctors engineers educated people precisely yeah but they are bringing the people they, they come from in the boat nobody knows where they are coming from and what they are doing and how many crimes they did before they come you have no idea mm -hmm. they throw their papers in the ocean and they come to you yeah no it, it impacts on so many different people's lifestyles you know I was once well it's actually a courier so a person who does deliveries yeah English man I started talking so like, have you always done this he's like no I used to be a painter decorator it's like what happened there he goes I used to charge 150 quid a day then loads of immigrants came over and they had no idea about any skills when it comes to that. They would charge £60 a day, totally undercut my labour costs, and eventually I would get no work whatsoever. The only work I would ever get is to be called in to sort out the bad work that the cheaper labour has done. So what's happened in England is that we've had loads of immigrants come over from Eastern European, Eastern, Eastern European, no, Eastern Europe, so that the Poles, the Hungarians, the Ro Romanians, They've seen what's happened with Islamic migration into this country as well, and that's why they're going home and saying, no, we do not want this in our country. We will see what's happened in England, and it's no good, so we are not entertaining this in our homelands whatsoever. Good for, good for them. You see, actually, this is why I'm saying there's, there's a change is happening, and I hope the change will happen very soon, and people, they will, be, they, they will awake, and people like you, they will be more uh, uh, knowledgeable about what this cult is about. Uh, and the problem with this religion is not about like they want to convert you the, 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 this is the first step but then later they will force you to do things they will force you what to eat what to drink what to say what to say what to what to wear they will force you everything is about enforcing others into doing things so the most priced thing you have is your freedom you see I came to I came to America not because I'm seeking better life actually my life in the Middle East uh, when it's come to let us say uh, uh, money or anything it's a lot better than what I have here but here I can say what I'm saying to you right now mm -hmm. this is what make me come here I love America for I can speak I can say my mind I can write my books I can be what I want to be if you live in Islamic countries even the food you will eat even when you eat like as an example there's a punishment there's a penalty of jail if you eat in the month of Ramadan in the street <laughs> And if you live under uh, uh, like a very st a strict Islamic Sharia law court uh, uh, rules, not only they will put you in jail, they will beat the hell of you. You know, mm -hmm. you know. They, mm -hmm. You can see there's a video of a guy. He, they did beat. They broke his legs because he's wearing a jeans. That's it. This is the crime. You know, they break his legs yeah. in, in public. They gather the people in the middle of the square of the, of the town and they start beating his legs with big four by four wood until they broke his legs because he was wearing jeans this is what yeah. you will witness this is this is a dangerous cult this is not just a cult there's many cults in the world you know there is a, a jehovah's witnesses there is etc but they will not do what the muslims do islam is a very dangerous disgusting satanic cult and this is why all of us we have to fight it even if you are an atheist because islam is a threat for everybody islam is not against the christian actually the christians uh, compared to the atheists, they will have a lot better treatment from the atheist. Christian, they can pay and live. Atheists should be killed according to Islamic law. Yeah. 
Indeed. Now, what you've seen going on in Europe, do you reckon there's any chance of that taking hold in North America, or specifically the United States? I don't believe Muslims will take hold of anything. You know, I believe Muslims uh, is very much uh, divided, and Islam is is uh, you know, uh, regardless what people they say, Islam is growing. I believe Islam is dead. Uh, but uh, but still, few can do a lot of harm to the country. You know, you do not need uh, one million terrorists uh, uh, to terrify uh, England. We need only one or two a day. You know what I mean? Yes. We do not need really, you know, the ter terrorism is not based in, in, in army. It's never been based on army. It's been based uh, that I can terrify you. This is what, the whole idea. So they do not need to have an army of fighters. If every day they launch an attack and you have 365 days a, a year, uh, you know, that will make your, your life became miserable. For you do not know if your child will come back or not. People walk in the street, somebody will stab them with a knife. And especially in Europe, people are not allowed to carry guns, not like in USA. In USA, if somebody tried to do something to me, I have my gun with me. I, yeah. I'm legally, I, I have the right to carry my gun. You know, I have a, a, a license. I can take it with me in my car, in the street, in the mall. I can take it wherever I want. So if something happened, everybody is armed. Even women in USA is armed. So. Uh, uh, terrorism this is why you see the Muslims in USA when they attack the attack places which is uh, people are not allowed to carry guns as an example the attack in Florida happened gay club. in a gay club and those are gays anyway they don't carry guns you know they carry their ass yeah. so uh, 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 <laughs> this is how it is so they carry places they, they attack they carry the attack on a places where people they don't they are not too much into guns or they are not allowed to have guns uh -huh. uh, but if you know uh, if, if when they knew that everybody have guns like now in the street where I live who dare to shoot I mean who in the world dare nobody dare because if you shoot everybody will shoot at you from every direction you know <laughs> I mean <laughs> yeah. you hear this as well in America that people are more reluctant to beat their horn because we do it over in Europe it's fine but in America you hoot the wrong person he might have a gun so you've got to be a little bit more careful before you start throwing your fingers up at someone. Absolutely. And the second you withdraw your gun, you are dead. You are yeah. dead. You know, it means you are committing suicide because somebody is going to shoot you. And obviously, you don't you don't withdraw your gun to to say hello. You are you, you know nobody would draw the gun just to scare people. It's just to do it. So the second you use your weapon, you're gone. You know, and when when a criminal he knew like you know this is why I don't like cities which they allowed only, like they say, the guns are not allowed. By doing that, you allowed only criminals to have guns. And nobody can stop them. By the, by the time the police will come, the guy will be like killing 50 people. You know? So true. In, in America, you can't do that, you know. The only people who are going to be given their guns to, let's say there's an amnesty, it's only going to be the good people. All the bad people are going to keep the guns and it's going to... Yeah, yeah they're, they're way too far down the line. But, Mr. Prince, I'm going to say to you, I, I'm going to stick a fork in this. I, I've got to crack on. But is there something you'd like to get off your chest? I know you broadcast regularly and you speak very frequently. But is there one last thing you would like to express before I, I bid you good day? Um, you know, uh, I, I encourage people to read and to educate themselves. And mm -hmm. don't ever listen to a Muslim teaching about Islam because Muslims, they lie when they speak about the religion. I never saw a Muslim. Muslim, they believe in Taqiyya, chapter 3, verse 28, and they practice it daily base. Don't learn about Islam from Muslims. Don't learn about Islam from liberals. Learn about Islam by seeking real source. When I speak about Islam, if you read my books, uh, you can find them on Amazon, uh, you will see that I never spoke of my own opinion. opinion. I have the Islamic reference right away in the front of you everything the Muslim believe in Muslims who speak English usually don't tell the truth and a few of them they speak the truth like as an example and Jam Shawadri he speak the real Islam but people they say he's not a, you know he's not really following the true Islam Isis they speak the real Islam but they say to you Isis is not Islam but the fact it is the opposite those are the true Muslims anything else is fake and I challenge anyone to show me one thing Isis did 
is not what Muhammad did one thing just one you cannot find it Muhammad he ordered to burn people Muhammad he split the women two pieces when she was alive Muhammad he ordered to kidnap Muhammad he ordered to assassinate Muhammad he killed women Muhammad he did everything and actually Isis I believe is strongly are a lot nicer than Muhammad so don't listen to just people say to you what they say check it out yourself investigate and don't be a fool that's all definitely so <clears throat> definitely so I'm gonna put some links up to your work on my website but where can people check out your work you're most predominantly found on YouTube correct uh, yes actually uh, if you go to minds.com slash Christian Prince uh, you, they can find me or they can find me in Batterion. they can search for a Christian Prince they can find me uh, and I have an account in YouTube at the Arabian Prophet the Arabian Prophet they can find me that too you know um, and you know my videos are over not only in my channel but if you want to like the uh, uh, website and you know you know my uh, my page in uh, in minds right you have uh -huh. it yep. you, we because, each other. yeah because you text me there so you can you know already you have there and if they go there you can click at any of my videos and they will find my YouTube too and they will find my Facebook etc okay great now this is a very short episode for you right? you don't mess around the amount of like I've looked at some of your videos they're like four and a half hours long five hours long so this is just a brief conversation for you yeah well you know because education is education if, and I don't like fast uh, uh, fast food uh -huh. You know, like when you give me a topic, either I cover it I, or I better not to speak about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because uh, you, you need to reach the point. It's like, you know, uh, uh, imagine somebody invite you to a restaurant and then he says to you, you can take it from the dish a bite. I mean, why you put the dish in front of me if you want to give me only a bite? Either you give me the dish or don't give it to me. I yeah. believe in dish giving, not a bite. <laughs> awesome okay then so well look thank you so much for your time today i've really enjoyed it and i i've learned a lot i, I well and truly have so thank you so much thank you my friend and god bless and uh, feel free to contact me again if you if you like to uh, to have another uh, uh, talk uh, time and i will be happy to do it that's great i think there's a, a lot more knowledge for you to share so i'll probably take you up on that offer thank you very much yeah welcome god bless take care top man see you later bye-bye bye-bye